We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. Today's podcast is super special because we have two incredible guests on the show, Christine Lakin and Vikas Adam, the narrators of the Blood Race audiobook. If you've been following Kate's channel, you know that the audiobook of the Blood Race is coming out on March 30th, which will be tomorrow when this podcast is posted. So we're both very excited for you guys to hear it. So in this special episode of The Kate and Abby Show, we're sitting down with voice actors Christine and Vikas to discuss all things audiobooks. Christine Lakin is probably best known for her role as Al in the 90s sitcom Step by Step, which was just the beginning of her successful career as an actress, producer, screenwriter, and of course, audiobook narrator. You might recognize her voice from audiobooks like James Patterson's The Warning or The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. And pretty soon you'll know her as the voice of Hawk in The Blood Race. Vikas Adam is an award-winning audiobook narrator who has also worked professionally as an actor, director, and producer in addition to teaching acting for various nonprofit arts organizations. And you might recognize his voice from best-selling audiobooks The Life of Pi by Jan Martel or The Lies That Bind by Emily Giffen. And pretty soon you'll know him as the voice of Icarus from The Blood Race. Before we get started, we have to thank our sponsors who are you. That's right, you guys are the ones who support this show and keep it going. So if you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this show alive and free of interruptions. Christine and Vikas, welcome to the Kate and Abby show. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having us. Yes, we're excited. So on this podcast, we always talk about the why, how we do creative work because it matters. So I would love to kick off this whole discussion by asking you both, why audiobook narration? Well, um, to be frank, you know, I, I kind of fell into this world about, oh God, I hate to date myself, maybe 15 years ago. Um, I had been doing uh, a lot of voiceover, mostly cartoons. Some, um, there was some, uh, I did a couple like animated films and some commercials. And it was, I literally just auditioned for it, not really knowing what I was doing. <laughs> and um, I, you know, Dennis Ko, who's been working at Literati um, and helped engineer this, my parts in the book. Um, he and I have been like work wife, work husband ever since. And I never realized how fun, I didn't know what I was doing when I jumped into it. And now here I am 15 years later, a hundred plus audiobooks later. It's one of my favorite gigs out of all the plethora of things that I do in my life. It's one of my favorite gigs. And it's because I have complete autonomy to be a million different characters, uh, to be men, women, children. I could play an 80 year old a woman and a 16 year old girl in the same scene. It's like, it's like audio theater to me. And so as someone who was always a theater nerd, self-proclaimed, I guess to me, it's just like, it's another extension of what I always loved to do, which was to put on a play. That's awesome. That's so cool. Vikas, what about you? Oh, for me, you know, I, it's been about eight, nine years. Um, I fell, I fell into it fell into it as well. I went to a workshop that Audible was having and I, I, I just, I fell in love with it. I, I, I've, I've always loved reader's theater, which is where you're just doing theater with, with a script in your hand sometimes. And um, they asked me to audition with this science fiction piece and they saw that I could do an authentic Indian accent. Um, and being South Asian. And so I went ahead and auditioned, did a cold read with the accent. And two weeks later, I had my first book. They had a bunch of books that were Indian themed, Indian authors. And so that's where it started for me. 
and then it started branching off and started working with different people, work begat work, and and I haven't looked back. It's been an incredible journey. And a lot of the reasons Christine brought up are the same for me. It's like we get I get to do all the parts. I get to uh, I get to be bottom, you know? It's like, let me play the lion too. Well, guess what? You are playing the lion when you're doing an audio book as well. Yeah. That's so cool. That, that's so cool. And the that is really one of the most amazing parts, I think, is the diversity in the actual narration mm-hmm. process. That's so cool. So I know you both are actors. And what amazed me the most when I narrated my own audiobook, 100 Days of Sunlight, was the amount of creative energy that goes into reading well, because it's really not just reading, it's really a performance. And I think a lot of people don't realize that when they think of audiobook narration, they think, oh, that must be such an easy job. You just get to sit there and read a book, but it's actually a lot of work. And I have so much respect for professional narrators now that I've seen firsthand a lot of what goes into it. So that being said, what are some of the biggest differences between acting for film and performing an audiobook? Christine, let's start with you. Um, well, first of all, I mean, audiobooks are all about stamina. So, you know, you might be reading from nine to four in any given day with a few breaks here and there. I mean, not only vocal stamina, but, you know, it takes a lot of focus and concentration. There's no looking away. There's no glancing at your phone. There's no like thinking about something else for a second. If that's like, even on the days when sometimes I, I, when I'm on day three or four of a book and I can tell I'm getting tired, <clears throat> when my eyes are getting tired, my brain is getting tired, like I start making a lot of mistakes and then I get like so frustrated with myself. Like my mouth is not working today, you know? Um, so I think the stamina part of it, definitely, um, you know, I, from like doing film and television, it's, it's such a, it's such a, um, I guess, puzzle process because you might be filming the end of the, like the very end of the scene, the end of the movie, the, that's your first day. And then you're going back to the very beginning. So you're constantly having to sort of gauge where your character is at any given time. Um, and, you know, certainly for doing like episodic television, it's a very fast pace. So there's not a whole lot. It's like, come in. Yeah, great. That's your choice. All right, go ahead. Like, <laughs> just do what you did in your audition. There, you know, sometimes it can just be like, oh, okay. And now I'm here. And now, now I'm gone. All right. Bye. Thanks, everyone. So um, there's not really that time. Like with an audiobook you really get the feeling if you're going to sink into a character, especially if that character is your protagonist. Like I've done series where I've, I've had the fortune to play the same role, five, six, seven books in, you know, in a series. You get to know this person. You get to understand the way they think, the way they talk, like the, like the way they hate their ex-boyfriend or whatever it is. And like that's, a, that's like what I think maybe some people would feel after doing, you know, a a long show like seven years on a show or or something like that where they really get to sink their teeth into you know a character like that so i mean i think that's the positive side of it that's the real joy in getting to you know read something for three or four or five days Mm, that makes sense that's That's really fascinating yeah what about you vikas for me the difference between acting on stage or film versus audiobooks The fact that we do get to play all the characters or that you have to and when you are doing us when you're by yourself and you're doing all these multiple characters you've got a lot more carte blanche because um you can make that choice about that one character who may be a side character because you know if they come up again you know what you did however if you're working with multiple narrators you want to still you you want to honor everybody's individual process, individual style, but at the same time, you still got to be consistent. So um, I can't do one character and decide, oh, you know what? I'm going to give him a, uh, I'm going to give him a Southern accent and then not tell Christine. And then if this person shows up in Christine's (laughs) chapter, she decides, you know what? I'm going to make, make this person, you know, insert the blank. It can get tricky. (laughs) I can see so, where that would so, be very difficult to navigate around. So, so, so in that way, it's 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 fun, but at the same time, there's there's still a bit of um, there's a quite a bit of communication that does happen. Hmm. Um, and with theater, well, I mean, based on what you're doing, you get like three three and a half weeks, four weeks of rehearsal, right. and, <laughs> and 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 you're and it's just you and this this 
these characters that are regiment and those lines there aren't as many lines as you get in this book <laughs> right yeah. because it's not yeah. just dialogue so when it comes to accents if you're doing a, a film or 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 a, a show or something you've got you've got these you've got the lines that are already specifically there they're not going to change and well oh, we all know that that could change too, but you basically have these lines, you know what to expect. And so you can go in and you can, whatever your method may be to learn an accent and just go through it. But yeah. with a book, you can't necessarily do that because you've got to know what the rest of the narration is going to be. Right. And so you've got to be prepped with that. <laughs> Right. And you also have to kind of be in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. You're reading through a scene. It's like a heated scene between two people and you're going back and forth. And it's like, you don't necessarily have to have time to like phonetically figure out, you have to just be that actor in the moment as that character and then go back very quickly. I mean, it's, it, it is a very like fluid process. Mm -hmm. So, I, which is fun. I mean, it's, oh, it yeah. really does. It can keep you on your toes that way. And especially when like, the dialogue is great or you're like, I mean, I have been crying reading a book before because the characters are breaking up and I am literally like yeah. the, the female protagonist. And I'm like, but I love you, William. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so sad. <laughs> that is awesome. It's emotional. You get a chance to have that emotional indulgence and because there's no camera on you and no one's looking at you, it's so much freer. Yes, it cool. is very free. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. that's a really good point. So what is it like when, like, because you guys were talking about, and I can see where that would be so true that you kind of, like you were describing, Christine, like sinking into that character and really becoming that character, maybe you're even following them for several books. And um, when you're like having to read like through dialogue where it's switching back and forth between a couple different characters, what's it like, like coming in and out of these different characters? Because I can imagine you must get into like the zone of a character. So when you're bouncing around different characters and different personalities and different accents even, what's that like? I have to think, I must think that that's like really a tricky process at first. Uh, it's completely schizophrenic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was something in the last book and Dennis actually said to me, he's like, oh boy. He's like, "I good job. I was feeling for you in the last chapter <laughs> only because it was me, the protagonist, and like five different people and wow. everyone was talking. So everyone's like, we should do this. We should do this. Now we should do this. Da, da, da. And I was wow. like, I was like, da, 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 da. like, I was trying to keep everybody straight in my mind. And now and then, you know, you mess up and you're like, oh, sorry, wait, go back. Sorry. I thought that was someone else talking. You right. Because you can't memorize the entire book. So, right. you know, you, when you get to it, you just have to kind of like recall, oh, right. I remember what's happening here and you got to kind of do your best. And, right. Yeah, but I mean, it's fun. It really is fun, especially when you get some accents that like that are really fun to do right. uh, and that can really differentiate the scene. When you get one that's hard, sometimes like there'll be a German person and an, and an Irish person in the same scene. Very difficult for wow. me to go back and forth. Or yeah. like a British person and an Australian person. And right. I'm like, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I just have yeah. to get my bearings here. Yeah, you know? the accents, when the ones they're, when they're very, very similar. Yes, usually... or they... They 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 um the words formulate in your mouth the same way with mm -hmm. the accent but just slightly differently yeah. yeah that's actually a great segue into my next question which is who was your favorite character in the blood race or whose voice did you enjoy acting the most <laughs> I'm really curious for this one me too <laughs> um Fakas, let's start with you I mean I. Ion, Ion Icarus. I mean that. I mean that was when you know, obviously. But I, but I'm gonna say that's my that's my get out of jail free card. Um, and and I'm just I'm gonna go with Sensei. Mm. Oh, awesome. Oh yeah, Sensei is yeah. a good one. Yeah. Just um, it was fun. I had a real Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi, in my head <laughs> yeah. when I was doing him. Yeah. I would say Finn, but that's just because like I was obsessed with the Secret Garden when I was about six or seven years old. I saw the musical and like literally I just had like these characters in my head from the Secret Garden. Yeah. <laughs> and that's you know, I've like all I've always been obsessed with accents my entire life. I had I think my kindergarten teacher was British and from that moment on I was like, What is happening? What are you how what are you saying? <laughs> awesome. So I've and I'm I was raised in the South. So I've had a plethora of there's so many accents in the South and I'm like always someone talks and I'm like, Are you from Alabama? 
And they're like, how did you know? I'm like, that's, that's cool. an Alabama accent. <laughs> but you know, that's it's like, I love that kind of stuff. And I love mm-hmm. when there's a character, like there was an Ethiopian accent. I'm like, mm-hmm. I've never done that. Mm-hmm. Let's look that one up. How do I do that? So I feel like I'm always adding to, you know, the repertoire of things that I, you know, have never previously done. Some I cannot get, and I'm really bad at that. <laughs> I'm working on it, but there are some that are tricky. I find South African very tricky. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, South African stuff. For me, Irish is tough, which is one of the which was one of the draws for me for this book because I was like, yeah. you know what? Get, you, you're gonna get over your fear. And, <laughs> there you go. And, and you're Good. gonna and you're gonna and you're gonna and you're gonna do it. And Gary and Heather, who are on the other books, um, Gary plays uh, Finn and Heather plays Lara. I mean, they were both so lovely, and I was just like, thank you for sending me sending me samples because I was recording That's I think I was recording before everybody else and Gary especially I was like Gary what am I going to do here and he's like I don't want to suck because you're going to be doing it and then I'll really say, he's like you know I'm not even going to try and do his accent right now because it's not going to show up but I was happy by the time we came to the book and I felt comfortable so I was, yeah you know, Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's hurdle, awesome. Hurdle crossed. <laughs> that's so great. So what is the communication like? Because you were talking a bit about that because how the, you know, the communication between the different narrators. What about when you're working on a book where it's like you have such a big cast where you have maybe like four or five people that are narrating? So what, does the communication get like super crazy, like going over accents and different nuances like that? You know, I've, I actually, I'm like, I, I, I felt like such such a dork because since I was recording fast, I, poor Christine and everyone they, they got so many damn emails from me going I'm thinking of doing this I'm gonna do this blah, 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 blah. And here's my samples take a look you can take a listen blah, blah. and I felt so bad because I was like going I'm not hearing from people because I have those crazy days where it's like going from sun up to sun down and I'm like going, and the last thing I need to be doing is getting one more email from someone who's saying, I hear my voice is, you know, right. but you just got to do it sometimes because at least we're covering and trust that, you know, everyone's going to listen when they need to listen. And and all we got to do is communicate. No, it's, it's, it's extremely helpful. Even if you're just like filing it away for a later date, like, yeah. oh, we're not recording for three days. So, okay, file that away. And then I get in the booth and I'm like, wait, should we just listen together about with how everyone else is sounding so we can get a semblance of continuity here? And we, and then, I mean, we have amazing engineers. I do not like to engineer myself. I have done it, but I prefer not to. <laughs> it's very hard to do both. It's like directing yourself in, yeah. uh, in a TV show. It's like, there are people that can do it, but they're unicorns. Um, so I, but it's so great when you can say, sorry, can we just stop? Can you just play me him really quick? And like they've got everything tabbed and they know mm-hmm. your voice from what you did yesterday, what mm-hmm. Bacas did, you know, five days ago. And you listen and you listen. Okay, yeah, let's go. And then, you know, you like get back into the flow. I mean, that's the beauty of it. And I think, yeah, yeah I think without that, without that kind of communication, it, I mean, it would be impossible. It'd be great if we could all be in the same room reading it together. Like right. if oh. there, you know, I've only yeah. been able to do that once. Oh, really? And it was an amazing experience. Um, we did it on a Michael Connolly book. Oh, okay. So it was the yeah. yeah. So it was um some of the detective series that he did, and I actually got to like sit and we like did some of the scenes back and forth in the dialogues. It was it was fun. It was like doing a little play. That it was really cool. cool. The energy must yeah. be phenomenal doing something like that. Oh, it's awesome. Mm. Yeah, it's awesome. That it's is like so a cool. totally just a totally different vibe. Yeah, that's really cool. So, what are some of the most some of the best things and some of the worst things or the most annoying things about the audiobook narration process? Because everything has its pros and cons, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Not for sure. the time we're in the booth. <laughs> yeah. Sitting in a tiny windowless room for hours on end. And then you walk out at like four o'clock and I'm like, oh my God, it's so sunny out here. Has it been sunny all day? I come home, like, my, you know, I have an Apple Watch. My rings are at zero. It's like, you've made no progress today. I'm like, I know. I know. I've been sitting all day. Oh my and then I, my daughter's like, will you read me a book before bedtime? I'm like, <laughs> in my eyes. <office. laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> my voice is shot. My eye, I'm like, all right, one quick one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so great. 
Wow. But I mean, you know, all the things we've said about why it's awesome. Mm. I mean, it really is. It's it's like you get to to play. It's like pure play. And, you know, um, I've always loved to read. And when I was a kid, there was a book that I read about two kids that got locked inside a library, like on accident. And it was like my dream to get locked inside a library and to li- be able to like read all the books all night. I was like, oh my God, that would be amazing. <laughs> so the fact that I get to read for a living is <laughs> pretty, I was, pretty awesome. I was, I was the dork who, you know, in elementary school and in junior high, I was like, I, I, we moved around a lot, but the first thing that I would usually do whenever I'd get to the new school would, go, would be go to the library and ask the librarian, do you need a student helper? <laughs> and, <laughs> totally. Because that was, that, that was, the, that was my escape. That those and and I just remember in high school, my mom was like, you know, when it's time to get a get an get an after school job. She was, like, I was like, so oh great, I'm just gonna I'm gonna get one at uh, Walden Books. I'm dating myself, Walden Books or Barnes and Nobles or something like that. And she was like, you'll get fired because you'll be reading all the books. <laughs> that totally was me, constantly reading all the books in the bookstore. Yeah, that's so great. <laughs> that's awesome. <sighs> So we all know that a lot of research goes into the writing process, um, but I don't think many people know how much research goes into the audiobook narration process, from accents to dialects to pronunciations. So what is one of the craziest or most interesting things you've had to research for an audiobook? Uh, let's start with you, Vikas. Um, off the top of my head, the first one that comes to mind right now is I did a book <clears throat> last year, the first book of 2020. <laughs> um, it was the book by Arvind Adiga, who wrote The White Tiger, and it was his book Amnesty. And it was about an, a Sri Lankan man who is is uh, staying illegally in Australia, but in order to assimilate and not be caught, he... he 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 works his accent so that he can he can fit in and not and not um, be perceived as different. However, the way the book was written, you'd have his inner thoughts, and then you would have him speaking in an Australian accent. So in order to keep it similar, we were like, okay. So I did a so I did a South Asian accent for his inner thoughts, but then tried to be created a South Asian Australian ish dialogue accent for him when he's speaking but then all the other characters were speaking in a more precise Australian accent as was the narration wow. so to go back to that that was wow yeah that was that was that was a challenge but it but that it was sounds like my nightmare but it was, <laughs> that would be so hard wow. for me. but do you know That's but crazy. do you know what, what made the difference for me there um was having an amazing director yeah. Um, not, not, and I actually, I actually engineered myself, but I had, I requested the production house to give me a director and, and I suggested a, one of my dear, uh, director friends, Olivia, who is Australian and having her there Oh yeah. to be able to bounce off and for us to, to come up together and collaborate because that's when it's, when it's the most fun. I mean, that was the, that was a real godsend for me. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Having someone just even to be like, maybe say it like this, and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. More emphasis on the R part of this word or whatever. Gosh, that's so helpful. Mm. Um, I did a, a book once where, so um, I did a, uh, it's a, there's a book and a sequel, and there are a million um, British accents in it. So there's proper London, there's Cockney, there's like, um, uh, like Welsh there's, I mean, all these different accents. And like I just said, you know, when you live in the South, there's the, there's the, up, there's like the Metro Atlanta accent. There's the Southern Georgia accent. There's Alabama, South Carolina. So I had, again, this director who was British, but knew all of these accents. Oh. And it was, it was such a gift because not only could he help me make the book so much better, but then I, I felt like I got kind of a crash course in, some of these dialects from someone who knew them really well. Um, But I will say like, there are times when I've read, uh, especially when I do nonfiction, that I learn something um, that I never would have picked up that maybe this book before. I have read books about manic depression. I have read books about sex. I have read books (laughs) about um, 
uh, I mean, just a plethora of, of topics that I, I'm, and some of them have very difficult medical terms. Mm -hmm. That I think is the hardest. That in history, when you're talking about these like people in history who are real people and real places and real times, and you're having to like look up these historical names, <laughs> some of them are very tricky, like Italian names that are very tricky. Um, that Try Belgian. Is Try Belgian. Oh my gosh, Belgian, Belgian. is very it's, difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm Canadian, so I've got the French Canadian, and I can do that. Yeah. And I'm being told, no, the Belgian is this. You got to hit it this way. And I'm like, <laughs> Dutch is the French. craziest language. It, there's a whole series of books that was translated from Dutch, but all of the words, like the names of places and some of people's names, those are still, you know, written. They're still Dutch names. They don't look anything like what they sound like. So like S K O V would end up being like Carl. You're like what? Oh <laughs> so like every time there was someone's name, I'd have to literally be writing in. Okay, we're saying that like Carl. I mean, the pronunciation list wow. was like eight wow. pages long. It was mm -hmm. crazy. Oh wow, it was really difficult. I can yeah. see where that would be so extremely difficult. Wow. If you see something, you're like, just remember every time you see this word, you don't. So you say it exactly opposite how it looks. <laughs> and there were like wow. 50 of those. Yeah. Oh my wow. but, you end up training, but you end up training your brain. I mean, it's like after mm -hmm. doing it a while, you, it's, like, it's like it's a way of working that suddenly you're able to, oh, you can adapt then. And it takes a few pages, mm -hmm. maybe a day of recording and not getting as much in. But then for some weird reason, the second day, it just sinks in and it kicks in totally mm -hmm. always much easier yeah i agree wow. i agree and, and then sometimes the same words come up over and over so you know you know how to say things like psychophotosynthesis and it just rolls off your tongue <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow that's that's amazing so i'm really curious do you guys listen to a lot of audiobooks or do you prefer to read physical books i prefer to read physical books um but I do listen, I do listen to audiobooks, mostly like because I do have two children. So, you know, the time I get alone to read is usually at night. So I'll get three right. or four pages in before I fall asleep. But like the audiobook, I mean, if there's something I really, especially if it's like a, you know, a memoir or an autobiography by someone and they're reading their own book, mm -hmm. that's usually really great because mm -hmm. I think like you, you're really getting that story straight from them, which is kind of cool. Yeah, um, right. I don't know. What about you? I I love reading. I, I mean, but it's like, but I love. I'm I'm very tactile, and so I love a physical book. Mm, yeah. In my hand. And so anytime someone's like, oh yeah, I can just send it to you. I, you know, my friends have do these wonderful books, and I'm like, yeah, I can just send you the PDF. And I'm like, no, but then I won't read it because then I'll feel like it's work. Yeah. I know. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Yeah, and I like to be able to just throw like a book in my bag, and you know, you can pull it out if you're somewhere, and no. not have to get on your tablet and be looking at. I it's too much eye strain. <laughs> yeah, right. Also, is it ever annoying to listen to audiobooks as a narrator? Like, are you mentally critiquing the narrator's style <laughs> and thinking like, oh, I would have read that differently? <laughs> Maybe I <don't>, sometimes. <laughs> I I don't know if it's I would have read that differently so much as what what can I learn from that and if it if I had a particular reaction to it why did I have a particular reaction mm. to it because I've listened to some of my stuff um and I will be like what what what, what was I thinking there but then you remember when you're in the booth and you're going at this pace, you don't have that option to like stop after every line to get it right. Mm. So, or to listen to back to yourself and critique yourself, which would be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you've just got to, you've got to be kind to yourself and you've also got to be kind to others when you're listening and, and, and listen with, um, l listen with compassion mm. and see if you can, see if you're going to learn something from it. That's my... yeah. That's really awesome. I love that. I will say I don't I don't listen to myself very often, but I also never was an actor that watched myself very often either. So, but that's just that's just me. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, that is really interesting. So I know you both have performed a wide variety of genres, but what is your personal favorite type of book to narrate? Uh, Vikas, let's start with you. 
I really, I really can't pick one because really? I have been so blessed. I have been so blessed to genre hop, mm. and 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 to the point where where it's like, um, did sci-fi fantasy last week? Now I'm doing history this week, but it was it was most exemplified for me as to how lucky I was because I also I think I would get bored of doing mm, right. the yeah. same the same genre after genre and, and and I'd lose some of that. But there was one year when I was nominated at the Audis for um, middle grade and erotica. <laughs> <laughs> all, <laughs> and, 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 and Paula Poundstone was the host that year and she and she was like she kinda had a bit of a a field day with that with that one. Um, but that really but that one but that was an example for me as to like Wow, how how lucky am I mm. that I get to um, jump around, jump around, yeah, and yeah. Um, just have fun? Yeah, it's it really is. I'm always like when you know when you get like oh we have something for you you want to audition great and they're like okay there's you know they've hired you and you're like what's this one gonna be about you know it's always kind of a, a nice surprise to to jump in. Um, I I really I do love thriller. But that's just also what I I do like to read, kind of like mm. a you know a, a psychological thriller. Um, something kind of keeps you on your toes. I think it's fun. And and I will say I've I've lately been reading anthology short stories, beautifully written, just like nugget stories that are just kind of slice of life or you know have some kind of historical fiction to them. Um, and those have just been very sad. And three to four pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and three to four pages. <laughs> There is something to that, though, too. I mean, you're, it doesn't really matter. You're still reading the same, you know, the same yeah. length of a book. But but to have a story that's maybe eight pages or three pages or whatever, you feel yeah. very gratified. Just, oh, I'm really nailing this today. But right. talk about yeah. incredible, but talk about incredible art when you're able to read these short stories that are just like, whether they're four pages or whatnot, or they're like a certain yeah. amount of words, and to see how clean the writing is and how precise. Totally. I, it's, totally. it's such a gift and it astounds me when I, and I'm always in awe of writers in that way and yeah. I, I, I need to I'm like going I would never be able to do that I know I know it really is you have so much more appreciation I think when you're performing someone's words and how, how how much time went into you know developing these characters this story this anthology this series I mean versus someone who's just consuming you know, I think there is a, yeah, there is maybe a higher level of appreciation for it. Yeah, I can yeah. see where that would definitely have that effect. Yeah. It must be a great way to discover new authors that you wouldn't have found otherwise, too. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's really fun. That's and fun. I find myself now, like, for so long, I, I wasn't reading as much for pleasure because I, I was reading so much for work. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is... Um, in the last, I don't know, I think just this year, I was like, I need to start picking up more books because of how much I enjoy reading. My kids are getting older, so they're leaving me alone a little more. Um, <laughs> but it is like, it, there is something just like so wonderful about when you're reading your own stuff and then you read stuff for work. I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's good to remember why you love it, yeah. you know? That yeah. makes so much sense. That's something we talk about yeah. a lot where when you do something you love and then you start to do it for work, sometimes it can start to like, lose the luster it once had for you, the attraction it once had. And so it's good to have things that bring you back to that place of like, oh, yes, I love this. So like, I think it's yeah. so important to have those things. Mm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. For sure. So I think we probably have some listeners who are interested in pursuing a career in audiobook narration or voice acting. So I'd like to wrap up this discussion by asking you both, what advice would you give to an aspiring audiobook narrator? Um, Vikas, let's start with you. It's a, you are acting. So you've got to know how to, all, 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 the, all the tools that actors learn character building um it's not just about funny voices it's about doing a scene breaking down a script um that that's first and foremost i think even if you're doing nonfiction. Mm. yeah building a, a character um having a character in your head what does this character look like how do they walk how do they sit when they talk do they do they grunt when they are they you know they're written as a smoker. How do you see them? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, I have very vivid characters in my mind 
when I'm doing that kind of work. Um, and I think also, you know, from a technical side, I was a singer for many years. So for me anyway, maybe it came naturally. It's something I brought to my work, but I think it is helpful. Diction, yeah. diction is paramount. If we can't understand you, there's no point. So um, diction and also, you know, warming up your mouth in the morning, warming up your vocal cords, taking care of your voice, like all of that is a real thing. Um, and I think also just thinking about how in, in what style is this book written and what is the pace of this book? How does this flow? How does this sound? Everything's a little bit like music to me. So, you know, there are some writers who write and they write da 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 And there are some writers who write more like this. And so you have to kind of understand, you know, or at least to, to your ear, like what is, what is this writer trying to say and how do I want to convey it? Because I think that there are people that read the same things, you know, the same way for every single book, and that's fine for them. Um, but I think if you can, if you can try to come up with like what it sounds like to your ear, I think it's always a little more aesthetically interesting. Mm -hmm. mm, that's so interesting. Yeah, I, I love the music analogy. I'm very musical as well. And that's definitely that carries over into writing for sure. I notice that even when I'm yeah. writing, you know, if something is more flowing and lyrical, or short and sharp. So there's definitely different style there in the way that you would narrate and act it. So that's, yeah. that's really, and even in just from point. scene to scene, you know, yeah. yes. um, or from chapter to chapter. Right. I mean, there's, there's quiet chapters of introspection. There's chapters of, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, of discovery and excitement and anger and, you know, and those, those things flow, you know, through the book and that's what that's what makes the book i think dynamic well you guys have both done a fantastic job with the blood race audiobook i've only heard Thank a little you. bit of it but i cannot wait to listen to the rest and i cannot wait for <laughs> our listeners to experience it i think they're going to love it so thank you both christine and vikas for being on our show today yes, thank you guys so much it was thank awesome chatting with you yeah thank you it was a pleasure and it was a real pleasure doing this series uh, thank Likewise. you guys so much for the amazing work you did on the blood race. I was mentioning to Vikas at the beginning of this conversation, just it was such a surreal experience listening to the blood race for the first time. Like I had chills because it was just like so surreal. Like it felt like listening to like a film. It was so immersive. And you guys just, oh, awesome. I cannot praise you both enough for how talented you are and just what a wonderful job you did. I couldn't be more happy with it. It's amazing. Oh, thank, thank you. you so That's much. a huge compliment. Huge. Yeah, you always you always think as yeah. an as an actor, you just want to make the writer proud. You know, the director too, but the writer is really you know this does yeah. come from his or her mind, and so it's like it it is it's such a it's it's such a high compliment. So thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you both so much. I thank so you. appreciate <laughs> it, and thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. I am so excited to share my audiobook of The Blood Race with you guys. I could not be more thrilled with the incredible work that Vikas and Christine put into this audiobook version. I hope listening to it is all the more richer of an experience for you after listening to this awesome interview. So if you haven't had a chance to go pre-order your copy, the link's down in the description. I can't wait to hear it myself. I haven't heard the whole <laughs> thing yet, and I'm so excited to listen to it. So I know you guys are going to love this experience as well. So go do that right now. And if you enjoyed this episode of The Kate and Abby Show, share it with a friend, maybe a friend who's interested in pursuing audiobook narration. This would be a perfect episode for them. And be sure to give us a nice rating Again, thank you so much to our patrons who support this show and keep it going. If you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this show alive and free of interruptions. And if you haven't seen the YouTube version, the video version of this podcast, and you're just listening on an audio platform, go to Kate's YouTube channel and check out the video version, which is all the more dynamic, which is youtube.com slash Ka Emmons. And you can also find some awesome writing tips on my channel, which is youtube.com slash Abby Emmons. Until next time, stay stoked and rock on.